to Imran Khan, Prime Minister of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, to make his keynote address. <coughs> بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا کرابدو و یا کرستائین سیکس جنرل وائسی حسین براہم تہا فورن منسٹر کگڈم آف سالدی ریبیا پرنس فیصل بن فرحان السالد آنڈربل فورن منسٹر آف چائنا وینگی روائل ہائنسز Honorable Foreign Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. First of all, let me welcome you with great joy and happiness on this uh, 48th. For welcome you with great joy and happiness on this uh, 48th. Foreign Minister's OIC meeting and it's being held in Islamabad at a time when we are celebrating our 75th anniversary of our independence. So I want to warmly welcome you. I hope you have a great stay here. And from the people of Pakistan, they are overjoyed that all of you are here and on this special occasion. Today I want to specially congratulate our OIC members because of a landmark resolution passed in the United Nations declaring 15th March as a day to combat Islamophobia. But I want to remind people why 15th of March. 15th of March was a day when a gunman walked into a mosque in New Zealand and shot dead 50 people. Why did he shoot them? Because he felt that all Muslims were terrorists. Where did this Islamophobia grow and was allowed to keep growing after 9-11. What happened after 9-11? Unfortunately, this narrative of Islamic terrorism, Islamic radicalism, this narrative went on unchecked. Respected Foreign Ministers, I have spent a lot of my life in England, touring all over the world as an international sportsman, and I understand the Western civilization probably much better than most people. I went to university there and then used to spend half my year playing sports in the summer in England. Now I saw this growing. After 9-11, this Islamophobia kept growing. And the reason was, I'm sorry to say, that we, the Muslim countries, did not do anything to check this wrong narrative. How can any religion have anything to do with terrorism? How was Islam equated with terrorism? And once that happens, how is the man in the street in Western countries, how is he supposed to differentiate between a moderate Muslim and a radical Muslim? How can he differentiate? Hence this man walks into a mosque and shoots everyone, everyone he could. Unfortunately, what should have been done and wasn't, the heads of Muslim countries should have taken a stand on this. But instead, a lot of our heads of state kept saying things like, well, we are moderate. 
the moment you say you are a moderate Muslim, you automatically say that there is some uh, extreme form of Islam. Our head of state at the time, after 9-11, he, he coined a phrase called enlightened moderation. I understand English better than most, I still don't know what it means. Enlightened moderation was a term to appease those who were relating terrorism to Islam. And unfortunately, as a result, there was this perception that there are different types of Islam. There's some radical Islam, there's some moderate, there's some liberal Islam. There is only one Islam. Islam of a Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no other Islam. In human communities, in every human community, you have your moderates, you have your liberals, you have your conservatives, it's a, you have your fanatics. Every human community has that. The man who walked into the mosque in New Zealand clearly was not a normal person. So, but why no other human community was branded with their religion? 1.5 billion people branded by this, these terms. And I'm, there always should be self-criticism because that's how you improve. Unless you analyze your mistakes, you can't improve yourself. So that was the biggest mistake we made. We did not challenge this narrative. And guess who suffered? Muslims living in Western countries. They kept suffering. Because any incident would happen, any terrorist incident by a Muslim, immediately meant that every Muslim became branded. When 9-11 happened, I still remember, people were petrified in Pakistan that I hope there was no Pakistani involved. How could we res be responsible, how could whole community be responsible for some fanatical deed by some extremists. So therefore, this was a big, it was one of the worst periods for Muslims living in uh, non-Muslim countries. And then, in 1989, there was a book called Satanic Verses written by a, a Muslim who knew, because he came from a Muslim family, he knew the reaction in the Muslim world amongst the Muslims if he insulted or mocked or ridiculed a Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. But what happened after 1989 was, rather than again the Muslim world coming up with an intellectual narrative, trying to explain to them that why do we feel, why are we so hurt when a holy prophet is ridiculed? Why does it hurt us so much? Living in and knowing the Western societies, I knew why they couldn't understand because they do not treat religion like we do. Jesus Christ does not, is not treated the way we in the West, the way we treat a holy prophet here. So they couldn't understand what was going on. Why were there demonstrations? Why were there death threats to Salman Rushdie? So they kept thinking that the Muslims do not allow freedom of expression. So Muslim world is intolerant. It doesn't allow freedom of expression. They were able to vilify our religion. And yet there was no coherent response from the Muslim world. And therefore, we kept into the cycle every few years, there would be some cartoons, insulting cartoons against our Prophet. Every few years, there would be something uh, insulting him. We would respond. There would be some act of extremists. They would not respond. So this Islamophobia...